Well, one of the first big movies I did was Other Halves, which um, was taken from Sue McCauley's book by the same name. And she, in fact, had been involved in the script. And that was a great experience with John Lang as a director. Um, that was more like um, uh, interesting for me in, in what I observed more than anything else, especially to do with the young fellow uh, Mark Polisi, who they literally took from the streets and put into a movie. And so watching that, you know, here's me with all this theatre training and, uh, and so on, and watching him, who was the real McCoy in the film, it just, it taught me a lot about what is important on film, you know? Um, he was so natural, he, because he was the person he was playing. But I, it turned a big light bulb on in my head for me, see, seeing that, you know? And, and seeing the way that he related to, uh, to Lisa Harrow as well. It was great because um, you knew you were involved in something quintessentially New Zealand. And remember, this is going back a little bit. And so um, New Zealand material didn't have the sort of, um, you know, the ascendancy that it might have today. Um, and also it was a real pet project of Muni's and you could see he was really excited about it. And it felt, it just had a good feeling associated with it. It was, you know, in summer and uh, on the beach, a lot of it, it was, uh, <laughs> it was a good time doing it. The moment when um, the dad has tried his hardest to keep the son away from Furpo and the son makes a conscious decision to go against his father's wishes and um, go and help Furpo in a scene on the beach. And the dad has to really grapple with a whole range of mixed emotions at that time. And I thought that was, that was a lovely moment for the dad in the movie. And, um, and it was nice. It gave, because the father was sort of like uh, relatively, the, well, he was like the baddie to a degree. So that was a moment that allowed the audience to see another side to him. Yeah, Shortland Street certainly was um, a jolt to my psyche. I mean, I had just uh, come from um, some two very large theatre roles. I'd just played Hamlet and I'd just um, played Eddie Carboni in A View from the Bridge by Arthur Miller. So here I am, we're, we're there on the first day's shooting, you know, I've got my script and I'm looking for the character arc and the story arc and all this kind of thing. <laughs> Because I had no knowledge of what, um, you know, soap drama really was like. And while the, the young actors took to it like ducks to water, I actually struggled a bit at the beginning. They used to save all my scenes to the Friday afternoon when they were running out of time because they knew that I would always be onto it, you know. And my office scenes, we'd knock off like about 20 office scenes on the Friday afternoon. Um, but I didn't mind that. I quite liked the technical side of filming and TV. I sort of, uh, after a while, I actually, once I got used to it, I quite enjoyed that, sort of that double level. You have to be, one part of your brain has to be conscious of the technical side of things. Dr. McKenna, yeah. The one, <laughs> the one thing I always felt about Dr. McKenna was that um, while he was meant to be the, um, the head of the the clinic and, you know, the CEO and the, the, the sort of the father figure and all the rest of it. I always found that it was always the younger people that were teaching me the lessons of life all the time. I was always getting it wrong. <laughs> Whereas I thought I was meant to be the, the wise one that knew it all, but apparently not. Epitaph was a fantastic experience for me, really, to, to go around New Zealand to every little town in the far-flung corner of New Zealand where there'd be some local historian who knew the history of that area, whose knowledge we were able to tap into. And the people in all these places were all fantastic and helpful. And I got this appreciation of New Zealand's history through doing this series. I realised that our history was 
recent, it was raw, it was vivid, exciting, dramatic. I mean, you know, at school, I'd just been totally turned off history. And here I was actually getting quite excited about it. So that took me on quite a ride for about five years doing Epitaph. Plus, I was able to venture into the production side of things as well. I learned how to research. I wrote some episodes. I directed some episodes. And um, uh, John Harris was fantastic in incorporating me into the process and working alongside him. I learned a lot about the production side of television. And the whole ride was just a great experience and a real New Zealand experience too. And the thing that I really appreciated and touched me on many occasions was when people would invite you into their home and they would reveal information that obviously was sensitive because a lot of these stories were about murders and tragic events in, in family histories. And I just, um, on numerous occasions, I just, I really felt that um, I got a, I just basically was just, yeah, touched by um, the way they shared this information. And I think partly that was to do, to do with the fact that there was enough time had passed, you know, and, and these were stories within family histories that went back two, three, four generations. So in some cases, it was quite exciting for the family members to be talking about it. In others, it was closer and the information was more sensitive. But I just so appreciated the way people um, shared that with us for the sake of um, telling this story. Well, that was a bit like Epitaph on Water, really, wasn't it? You know, <laughs> I mean, my, my main... Um, the job in that one was uh, not to get seasick. I, I, I get terribly seasick. And um, of course, we were um, filming in some atrocious spots down there off the, uh, off the west coast at the bottom of the South Island. There's the, the old seas get pretty rough down there, and we're out in small boats. Um, but I discovered these things you stick behind your ear, you know, and they were brilliant. You had to put them on the night before. But on one occasion, I remember, you know, everybody else was just out of it. And there I was hanging to the mast, you know, you know, exhilarated in these conditions with the boat up and down and the wind and the rain and all that. And it was so thanks to I can't remember what they're called now, but um, they saved my life. And uh, and again, they were they were great stories too. just uh, had a nautical flavor. That's all. I love the process of discovering another person, you know, um, getting inside the psychology of somebody else's head and, um, and I'd probably more than anything, I guess, being able to lose yourself, you know, like <laughs> you don't have to be yourself, you can be somebody else and uh, I think that's a big part of it.